guys. Good evening. Good evening. Right. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yeah, right. Thank you so much for having us tonight. We from, as you heard that, uh, we from South Korea, and uh, we land here this country uh, last Monday, and it's been about four days um, having a great um, you know, fellowship and experiences, and also meeting with really awesome God's people right now. So uh, thank you for also the, the pastor. Thank you. Um, he uh, can uh, arrange this, you know, the special uh, the worship service. Supposed to be Friday night, right? But uh, Thursday night, uh, gathering together and then, you know, uh, opportunity uh, to share the love of Christ and the gospel of Christ together. And uh, it is also awesome to uh, meet the, uh, the people who can, we could, you know, recognize. And they've been here like Pastor um, uh, Evan and also uh, Pastor John, June, I'm sorry, and the other uh, staff, the uh, seminary students. So some of them probably uh, they graduated and uh, went to the probably a mission field right now. So we've been praying right now and then uh, hopefully you know, they're going to bear a lot of fruit in their ministry. And also it is a, also you know, thr thr uh, was really exciting to see uh, new faces uh, who uh, joined this uh, seminary, um, all the journey, uh, which is the education journey. Um, we pray that uh, you guys will learn a lot of things and grow up and you know, work on finding your talents um, so that you could glorify Jesus Christ in your ministry. Um, thank you for the young students. I uh, really appreciate it. My sermon is a little bit boring, maybe, so don't be, don't be uh, falling asleep, okay? All right, but I will do my best. Uh, my name is Min Ho Lee. So if you Google it, my name, probably not my face, different face, you can see that. And he's a really popular guy. Somehow, a lot of celebrities in Korea, they try to use my name without any permission. So I'm really upset. So uh, I guess uh, my name is really, uh, let's say, uh, the way they could become a pa the really famous pe people. So, uh, you know, so humbly I gave them the, my permission to use and become the famous celebrities in South Korea, even globally too. So. It is exciting to uh, know a lot of people like you know my name. Today, uh, my sermon topic is this one: Yahweh. Is one of the words the Lord? One more time: Yahweh. It's Hebrew, yeah, the Lord. Exodus chapter three, verse sixteen to seventeen. Uh, two verses. Let me read for you guys. Now go and call together all the the elders of Israel. Tell them, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me. He told me, I've been watching closely. I see how the Egyptians are treating you. I have promised to rescue you from your oppression in Egypt. I will lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites and Hevites and Zebuzites now leave. If you uh, maybe like the pets, actually really like the pets actually. I have one cat, one dog at my home. And this cat, it is called Coco. A really fine, famous name these days. And he used to be actually a street cat. He didn't have any owner or uh, the person who take care of supposed to take care of him, but somehow my one of the cousins' relatives is a vet actually working as a vet, and he got this cat as a gift and looking for the person who can take care of or uh, give him a new name. So I was really excited to um, have this cat as one of my family members. So my son and daughter, and including myself, and then my wife. We think about the name. So what was the you know, better name we could give him? So it is called Coco. Coco is a quite friendly. So we gave him, and we feed him every day, maybe two times a day. Every morning, I call him Coco, and then he comes from his house. But he has so many houses, you know, as you know, cat style. Sometimes he go to a different house. 
Sometimes he go to the neighborhood or maybe go to the maybe some storage or some little, maybe under the cars, like a lot of different locations. He used to stay or high or he feel more secure. And when he needs, it is called food. He comes to the, uh, the owner, which is the women calling. And interesting this one. Sometimes he went out during nighttime, as you know that the cats, they fight each other. The wild cats, street cats. Somehow they do have a territory that, what? This is my boundary. If you cross the border line, then I'm gonna, what? Beat you. So I'm gonna hunt you down. So my cat, Coco, they tried to protect. He kept his boundary with his track. But somehow, since he become, it is called, home cat, which what? He doesn't need to worry about food. He doesn't need to worry about shelter. He doesn't need to worry about any like dangerous situation. Why? His owners, like me, all the time thinking of his current situation and provides what he needs. Sometimes vaccinate, sometimes medication, sometimes with food and shelter we provide it when needed, when available, when necessary. So Coco, after having us, he started to lose concentration, which is what? Fighting, keeping territory. He become more powerless, or useless somehow, in terms of fighting, battle. So often he came back from the battle with a lot of wounds. Look at this one. On the right you know, ear has a shoe. He cut, it was a, one of the parts is what? Cut off, it's like gone. And completely ugly ear he has right now. And then me, it's like, as an owner, I was really surprised and they immediately called my, the relative, my cousin, what am I supposed to do? And then he said, well, give him some, you know, the, that is called the antivirus, which is the medication. And, you know, we could just like, see, to make him more secure. But somehow, his instinct, which means like na na naturally, all the time, when he get well, physically, they're looking for the moment all the time go out and fighting and not listening, disobedient, trying to expand his territory or boundary, fighting other cats. Well, interesting is this one, guys. We human beings, you and I, we born as actually simple nature since Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve, the Adam and, Adam and Eve and then put them in the what? Garden of Eden. He provided everything, no worry, perfect world. But somehow, based on the free will, let's make the right choice or wrong choice, you know, based on that situation, Adam and Eve made a wrong decision, which is the bad discernment they had. And since that moment, they got kicked out. And since Adam and Eve, which they, you know, the sin came to the world, and then all, all the descendants, what, became simple nature. Which means like, we do not listen our God's voices. We do not, we are not obedient what God commands us, what not to do. But all the time looking for is called self-centered. Please ourselves, and then trying to please, you know, maybe, maybe money self, or self, which is the self-centered, all the times. My question is this one, after this one. In the uh, disobedient, all the time, but we are in this situation, then what is next? There's a punishment, temptation, and also Satan's attack, warfare, and suffering, torture, unexpected, worries, miserable burdens, and we all the time facing this situation. Then this situation, two questions we do have. Have you ever, ever cried when you are in suffering? When you are in difficult time. And next question, who came to your life? Maybe kids, maybe when you cry, your parents, maybe your brother and sister may come to your life and they'll try to ask, how can I help you out? Maybe like seven students, when you are in difficulties, financially, physically, spiritually, physically, then you may cry out and then some of maybe your mentors, or teachers, or pastors, even God, maybe 
they listen and then come to your lives. Why? Life is difficult. Until we see Jesus Christ. This is our reality all the time facing the situation. Moses, his life, as you know that, is a really famous person. And 120 years, we divide it into three parts. 40 years, 40 years, and 40 years. 40 years as what? Prince of Egypt. It's like a lot of paradise, all the happy moment he had. Maybe palace, no worry about any situation. Being trained as a more secular leader person. Equip himself, doable, be able to maybe empower, rule over others. But somehow God came to his life. And then next 40 years, trying to what? Shepherd, which is what? Give up everything what God, he got from the all the secular world. Palace education. And be humble. In that situation, God came to his life. Encounter, encounter means what? Never ever experienced God, but encountered God, and He gave him a special calling. And another 40 years, what it is called? Leader of Israel. Leader of Israel. About that time, about 600,000 Israelite people, he had to lead. He take what is called, uh, take all the people from you know, Egypt to the uh, you know, land of Canaan, so in that situation, it was 40 years in the desert, they experienced walking with God, experiencing God, and love of Christ. Even was a Yahweh. It's like they call him, and he provide what they ask. Let me tell you this one. So in terms of 120 years, we could have learned about a couple of things from the Israelites' history in Moses' life. First one is what is called slavery. Slavery. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 14, it is called, The Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cry, cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. Slavery, which means oppression. Slavery means what? No choice. And no freedom, all the time, what? Oppression, which is what? Pressure, suffering, and also torture, a lot of stress. They probably wake up in the early morning, then they obligated to what? To work, maybe please others, and the burden, what they have, trying to complete their mission. And what the Bible said, yes, I am aware of their suffering. When? When they cry. When they cry about their distress. When they cry about oppression, God start to what? Watch and to listen. And second, their life is it is called salvation of God. Salvation of God. Exodus chapter three, verse seven to fourteen, it said, "So I have come down to rescue them from the the power of Egypt, Egyptians, and lead them out of the Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey." The land where the Canaanites and Hittites, Amorites and Perizzites and Hivites and Zebuzites now live. Interesting is this one. All the tribes they mentioned about Hittites, Canaanites, and then the Perizzites, all people, they were really powerful at the time. So Israelites, this small tribe, compared to other tribes, very powerless. And small tribes, and there may be no weapons compared to them. Military, even the power strength is really nothing. But in that situation, what God said, No worry, I have come to you, rescue you from that situation, and I will become the salvation of the Israelites. And then, next one is cry to God. Cry to God. We heard about the same Bible verse, but verse 9, look. The cry of the people of Israel has reached me. I have seen my harshly Egyptian abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. This actually message commitment to whom? Moses. Moses. He probably shocked when God commanded, you go and then take them out, rescue them. Why? Because I have commanded you. And then I will be with you. 
and the hero because they've been crying out every day. That's why I'm going to send you as my messenger to the Pharaoh. And this one, after listening all the message and all the commitments from God to Moses, and the Moses, what is it? He never ever immediately said, yes, I'm going to do. He never. He immediately responded, I'm going to be obedient. He never ever responded immediately, significantly what? Say, I will become your witness or servant. He had a lot of questions. Questions. I'm not able. I'm not ready. I'm not available right now. Acts chapter 3 and verse 44, 11 said, But Moses protested to God, Who am I to appear before a Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel of Egypt? And God replied back to the question like this one, reminding this one. God's messenger, Acts chapter 3, verse 12, God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have, when you have brought the people of, out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. Guess what? The one of the purposes God commanded Moses take the Israelites out to from the Egypt to the desert, not territory. I mean, expand their territory, territory, not the uh, let's say become the more prosperity. Prosperity like their lives. Try to uh, encourage them to like take them out from the Egypt to the desert for what? Worship the Lord. Where? In the desert. That's the main purpose God wanna send Moses to the Israelites. And he gave him this message. It is called Yahweh. Remind him who God is. Remind him. God replied to Moses. I am quiet. Say to, to this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel. Yahweh. Remind him, the God of Israel. And your ancestor, Yahweh, the God of Abraham. Yahweh, the God of Isaac. Yahweh, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. Probably at the time, Israelites, they never heard about Yahweh. They never heard about God. But they do remember all the time. Name of what? Abraham. Name of what? Jacob. They remember what? Isaac. They remember ancestor. But they were really surprised. Ancestor, their respectful ancestor, what? Who believe, who obey, who listen to, it is called God, called Yahweh. That is a message what Moses received from God and he's about to go to Egypt. It's about 1900, about seven Korean churches at the time the Japanese colonization, about 45 years, Japan occupied Korea. We lost actually Korea country and then, you know, we people, Korean people, actually no country, we didn't have our own names. Japanese, actually, their government, they force us to have Japanese names. And also, they force us to use Japanese language, not Korean language. Japanese, their government, also, they force us not have religions. We had to believe, it is called Shinto, the, nation, the religion of what? Japanese and national, the nationality of one. So, country, you know, the religion. But that time, actually, a lot of people who are looking for freedom, who are looking for is justice, who are looking for country back from the Japanese colonization. And that time, God sent the missionaries overseas. And a lot of the committed, the, you know, the missionaries, faithful missionaries from overseas, they're really well educated. Guess what? They got actually doctoral degrees. They be medical doctor, and also theological doctor and also education doctors they came to Korea with without any support they came to Korea with calling it is called calling God commanded them go to Korea and what rescue them and I'm gonna use you to raise God's leaders 
raise God's church, raise the future of Korea, then I'm gonna be with you all the time. Whenever you face the suffering, whenever you face, you know, whether you're facing any difficulties, call my name. What is called Yahweh. Yahweh. Then I will be. I'll be with you. A lot of missionaries, they establish church and school from kindergarten to maybe preschool to uh, middle, elementary, middle, high school, even college. A lot of people, the chosen you know, people, uh, the Korean people, here look at this one. On the left side, the person stand actually, is the pastor actually, but guess what? A lot of women, they came here. Guess what? What about a lot of the, uh, the Korean the pastors, like the theological the, uh, the, what's called scholars, what they said, one of the factors, Korean churches grow up rapidly, fast, because of what? Women's their leadership. Women's leadership. They came to God, and because of a lot of reasons, political depression, um, oppression. They didn't have any voices. Men's society, manship. They all the time oppressed under the man. So they want to have it is called voices to bring their you know, voices and represent their family and raise their educate their kids. But at that time they came to churches and then from the missionaries and church pastors, they heard that Jesus is a savior equally. We are the same people in the one body in the name of Christ. So based on this education, a lot of women, Korean women, they came to the cross and accept Jesus Christ, became, it is called leaders. Leaders, families, small group, and followers, and then also disciples, and then you know, pastors too. The next the picture is this one, look at this one. This is the first church in the Korea. Like, you know, it's a quite interesting, the structure, right? And then when left side, probably only isolated gender, right? Gender isolated, and only female. Another one is a male. What's confusion is, which means what? It's like the both, you know, the, the genders cannot be gathered together. Based on this one, then they worship the Lord under, it is called Japanese oppression, political persecution. And this time, a lot of churches, they growing. A lot of people come to the cross and accept that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and Savior. And one of the famous pastors, sexual missionaries, is Dr. William Berry. He established a lot of schools, like in you know, elementary schools and college. You know, Songshil University is the number one, the longest history in South Korea and raised a lot of leaders. And then let me give you the one story and then we'll finish up, you know, my sermon. His name is Robert Germain Thomas. He's from America. And the, uh, he was on the ship and then the, was the uh, uh, 1865. And he got a, actually the, uh, it is called the Bible. He tried to translate from Chinese to the Korean language, the Bible. And he had to stay in the China a few years. But you know, he was praying that one day, the country of Korea, Joseon Dynasty, opened the country and he immediately you know, landed to the, uh, the Korea and shared the gospel. But unfortunately, when he landed from the boat, he got murdered, which means he got killed, persecuted by the sword of the, uh, you know, the soldiers. But that time, according to history, what the Bible said, what the history said, he grabbed the Bible and he just said, believe in Jesus, and then he died. And the Bible is Korean you know, language, full of Korean language. But that time, a lot of people undereducated. The person who killed him, they grabbed the Bible and they bring back to home. And what did he do? He put, well, he ripped it up each page and put it on the, uh, the wallpaper in the, in the room. The wallpaper. And then one of the days, who could recognize and read the Korean language, he visited that house and started to read the wallpapers each word. One paper, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. He started to read. And the one of the part is Genesis, book of Genesis, chapter 1. God created the world. They start to read and they start to share. They start to what? To teach. They start to what? To all the express this news, the Bible, with others. Educate them. Interesting is what? He is, he had a lot of plans and 
future and the dreams. But it seems like, in terms of our perspective, he became meaningless. What? He just said, Jesus loves you. Believe in Jesus. But this is a legacy, which is the Bible. Commitment, sacrifice, became the small seed and bear a lot of fruit. And became, it is called, church revival in South Korea. And look at this one. The moment, a lot of people got persecuted. A lot of persecuted. And then when they said, do you believe in Jesus? Then I'll kill you. Our persecution. Guess what? A lot of countries in today in the world, Middle East countries maybe, in China, even all of communist countries, even America, even the South Korea, when you said, I'm a Christian, then a lot of people give them bad look. And a lot of give them what? It's like peer pressure. Do you believe in Jesus? Then what about your attitude, your behaviors? You have two faces, hypocrites, a lot of judgment, a lot of well, condemnation, persecution, verbally, maybe a behavior, like, a lot of things. I don't think there's a lot of difference between this time and today. Persecution we do have. In this situation, the God reminds us Moses' time, even Joseph Dynasty, 2,000 years ago, and the year is like about 19th century. And then what he said, remember my name, Yahweh, Hebrew Adonai, my Lord, Yahweh. I, Yahweh is what? God is with us. Interesting is this one, guys. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. It's Christmas time. What Jesus said, what the Bible said, Emmanuel, God is with us. There's so many names, so many meanings. God remind us, you're going to have a salvation. So the Savior, who's going to what? Share the name. It's called Yahweh. God is with us. If you believe Jesus who represents God is with us, you will have forever eternal life. You will be saved, Yahweh, when you call. You will be remembered, Yahweh, I will be with you all the time. When we're suffering moments, oppression moments, or depression moments, all the difficult moments. Guess what? Today, a lot of internal nations showing it is called COVID-19. Last two years, actually, our school and even Korean church, even inter churches, we worry about it is called infected, which means what about what is am I if I you know affected you know by the COVID-19, am I going to die? Actually, before we come here, we will really struggle. A lot of parents worry about insecurity, which means what? What about what if my kids may get you know got the uh, COVID-19? So, used to have about eight days, nine days, the you know, mission trip, but we reduce like about five days trip. And then like wearing the protecting the our mouth, what is gonna, you know, nose and with a mask all the time. We worry about today, COVID-19. It's been about three years. Guess what? After COVID-19, do you think we're gonna have no more worry? No more COVID-19? Maybe another COVID-22, another mute, like, you know, like it was a, the virus we may have, mutual, like, immune, you know, virus, another disasters we may have until we see Jesus Christ. Then my question is this one, guys. Your life, my life, every moment, single moment as a student, as a teenager, maybe temptation, your career, your education, your relationship with others, maybe a girlfriend, boyfriend, maybe. They're looking for any prosperity, which is what? Your money, all the become successful leaders, what successful person? Seminary students, after graduation, do you think you're gonna have a paradise ministry? No worry. Each single moment, you're gonna face a lot of difficulties. It is called another disasters, another suffering, another distress, another oppression. This is the life we are in right now. And God somehow came to your life and my life. He called you as what? The believers, missionaries, and Christians, and pastors, and also disciples. And He has given us 
special mission and be what faithful when we face any difficulties he reminds us to confess that Yahweh Yahweh God is with us when we are in difficulties we call him Yahweh my father Abraham my father Isaac my father Jacob my father my parents who confess their faith in God they encounter God they experience our Almighty Father's their power. I want to encourage you guys. Remember this one. Yahweh means He's been watching us. He's been listening. He's been seeing us. He's been knowing what we need all the times. He's been all the time with us. Amen. And tonight, Yahweh, when we call Him, Yahweh, He will be with us. This is the promise through Jesus Christ all the time is going to be with us. Why are we calling Yahweh all the times until we see Jesus Christ? After this service, do you think we're going to face immediately? It is called spiritual warfare. Satan is ready to attack us. Satan all the time tempts you, put us in what? Difficult situations. In that situation, Regardless of gender, regardless of age, regardless of any situations, what? We have to call our Father Yahweh. Then He will be all the time with us. And give us strength. Give us what we need all the times. So, I want to encourage you guys. Remember, before you leave, let's stand up. Let's stand up here. Let's say Yahweh. Let's say, my Lord. Amen. Let's say, God is with us. God is with us. Let's say, the unchanging God. Unchanging God. Let's call this Yahweh's name. And then, we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to song, we're going to sing the, uh, it is called, Once Again. And through Jesus Christ, who's going to encourage us to remember, God is with us. If you believe in Jesus, and then we call Yahweh. He will always be with us. And then give us the strength. Protect us from any dangerous evils and also any difficult situations. And don't remind us. No way. I know. I've been watching you. I've been listening to your voices. I've been looking at the moment of time I will be with you. Just call my name. I will come to your life. Let's sing together without confession.
person is sent Jesus Christ, our Savior. It is called God is with us. He is the person we suppose call him Yahweh. Yahweh. What do we cry out? Our voices. What do we cry out? What we need. What we ask. What we ask. What we, what we cry out. Lord, mercy us. My situation. My family. My current situation. My faith. Maybe my knowledge. So limited. Everything so limited. I am so simple nature. What do we confess? Our sins. God will listen to us. He's been watching us. Listening to us. Let's pray that. Let's repent our sins. Let's confess what we have all the times. Let's pray together. Let's call this Lord. And this woman, Lord, we want to ask her humbly. Be with us, Lord. Lord, we ask for what we ask for. We have a lot of burdens. We have a lot of stress. Jesus, Lord, we want to ask for If they have a lack of an opportunity, give them a right opportunity. If they go to college and become your witnesses, Lord. Lord, we want to pray for that family, all each of you, the pastor's family members, Lord, and then provide what they ask for. With a certain purpose, Lord. Lord, it's not for our pleasure. It's not for our personal. And the parents, that all the time, they give up what they ask you. They're for the kids. Completely depend on your direction. They follow their direction so that their kids they follow, become your leaders, Lord. We're going to ask you, please, lead their lives. Lead their education. Lead their faith. Lead their You heard our crimes. You heard our voices for prayer topics. We believe that you're gonna answer us. You're gonna be with us because we wanna call you as our Yahweh.